Well, tonight, we're going to talk about how God is all-seeing and I am safe. Now, that might not seem, you know, uh, to make a lot of sense, does it? Uh, that just because we are seen, we are safe, right? Um, but we're going to start out, we're going to talk about, you know, God, he sees us in our circumstances, right? He sees us in our now. And so if we look at uh, Psalms 139, 1 through 5, O Lord, I have examined my heart, and I know, uh, and try that again, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see me when I travel and when I sit uh, and rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Okay? So God knows our now. He knows our, the thoughts of our now. He knows the thoughts of others in our now and in our circumstances. He knows uh, what's happening beside us, behind us, in front of us, uh, down the street from us. Everything that's going to impact us, he knows our now. Okay? Does that, has anybody ever, ever thought about that? That when you think about God seeing us and seeing our circumstance, he's got a huge wide angle of that. Doesn't that kind of give you, give you a, a, a little little warm fuzzy that he doesn't just see me he's not just looking at me right uh, let's go on to genesis 16 8 through 13 and this is the story of of hagar uh after after she is um basically uh uh after uh sarah mistreats her so bad she decides she's she's gonna leave so and the angel said to Hagar, Hagar, Sarah's servant, where have you come from and where are you going? I am running away from my mistress, Sarai, he, she replied. The angel of the Lord said, return to your mistress and submit yourself to her authority. Then he added, I will give you more descendants than you can count. And the angel said, you are now pregnant and will, and will give birth to a son. You are to name his name Ishmael, which means God hears. For the Lord hears your cry of distress. Uh, your son will be will be a wild man and untamed as a wild donkey. There's some uh, words of, of hope right there, right? He will raise his fist against everyone, and everyone will be against him. Yes, he will live in open hostility against all his relatives. Therefore, Hagar used, an, used another name to refer to, refer to the Lord who had spoken to her, she said, you are the God who sees me. And also said, have I ever truly seen the, the one who sees me? So, so you have Hagar right there who realizes that God not only saw her, he saw her in her circumstances and he completely understood where she was at in her time, Right? Okay, so God not only sees us in our, in our circumstances that we're in, but he sees us in our pitfalls, all right? And by pitfalls, I mean the things that could trip us up, the, the things that come against us, the struggles that we go through, okay? He, he, sees us through, uh, he sees us in all of those things, okay? Um, so... I added uh, Psalm 139 back in here and jumped ahead a little bit uh, in verses 11 and 12. Uh, and this is, this is David. I could, uh, I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in the darkness I cannot hide from you. Okay? So my pitfalls, the darkness that we try to, to go to, um, to hide uh, from everyone around us, to do what it is that we're going to do, to uh, the, the, the things that come against us that put us in um, uh, dismay or uh, make us depressed, okay? All of those things that we encounter with darkness, God sees us through them, okay? 
there's a uh, passage later on that talks about that darkness and light mean nothing to you because it's all the same to you, okay? Um, Psalm 56, 8 through 11. You keep track of all of my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottles. You have recorded each one in your book. Have you ever thought about that? That it's not just that he's, he, he's keeping all of our tears. Every tear that was shed, he has a name for that tear. This tear is sadness. This tear is calamity. This tear is being bullied. This tear is loss of a loved one. This tear, every tear that we've shed. And I think even the tears of joy, right? I, hopefully, right? And it doesn't say he has a different bottle for those tears. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh, you know, if, if um, Amy and I, when we, when we started dating, uh, we would, uh, I, I traveled quite a bit. And so we would give each other notes. I'd, I'd leave a note somewhere in her apartment before, before I left. And she would usually slip it into my suitcase or something. And uh, so then when we were apart, we would, we would have those. Well, we saved those for a long time, okay? And as I traveled less, of course, we didn't, didn't do them as often. And as you get older, you know, things die away, unfortunately. But we still, she still has this, this box that has uh, just about every, every one that, that, that we ever wrote back and forth. Now, we see this box, and we see how, you know, how big the box is, how many are in it. But I couldn't pick one up and just tell you what it was without opening it up and reading it, right? But God, he, he, he sees that tear, and he said, oh, yeah, you remember this tear? This was that time that when, when you were seven, and you, were, uh, and, and you came home, and you found out that, that your dog had died. Or for me, when I was six years old, and I got off the bus from, from kindergarten and ran home to see, to see my horse, and found out that he had got uh, he had been gotten into the feed shed and foundered and was laying out in the middle of the corral, bloated and dead. This is that tear. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an understanding of how he sees us in our pitfalls. That it's 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 more than just yep he's having a hard time. So, um, let's see. Last half of verse 9. This I know, God is on my side. I will praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I will praise the Lord for what he has promised. I trust the Lord God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? And that last bit is something I just forgot to delete when I put the verse in there. But it's not like Hebrew something or anything like that. Speaking of Hebrew, <laughs> we're going to Hebrews chapter 4, verses uh, 12 through 15. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, hmm, uh, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Okay, so he sees us. In, uh, in our in our pitfalls, and the last the last thing he sees us in is our end. Okay. Um, so he sees my end. What do you think of when you th when you think of 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 end? When he sees my end, okay. You see our death, the end of a situation. The end of a of a, a trial that you go through, you know, there's there's lots of ends as uh, as we continue through life. So uh, we'll start with Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, a well known verse here. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. Okay, so he has he has a plan. That's going to end good. 
how many of us have, have, have come up with plans that are going to end good? And in the middle of it, all of a sudden, there's a rotten apple that you didn't know about. And you step on that, and it squishes all, <laughs> all over everything, and all of a sudden, nothing seems good, does it? Nothing seems good. But as you work through that problem and you clean out the rotten apple, all of a sudden the end becomes good again, right? All right. Uh, John chapter 10, verses 27, I'm sorry. Yes, 27 and 28. My sheep, yes, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. So he knows in our end that we're not going to perish. Romans 8, 28. And we know that God causes everything to work together for good for those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. Quite often people leave off that last that last bit. Okay? According to his purposes. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Remember the things I have done in the, done in the past, for I alone am God. I am God, and there is none like me. Only I can tell you the future before it ever happens. Everything I plan will come to pass, for I do whatever I wish. So if God has revealed a plan to us, as long as we're faithful, it's going to happen. You know, uh, you know, we're 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 talking in Isaiah there, um, but if we think if we think back to um, uh, huh, I have to think back better than what I'm doing right now. It's a name. I t I, t I told you guys names have a special place in my brain, and my brain is like is like Swiss cheese, and names all go in the holes. So, <laughs> um. Eh, we'll let that thought go because it's not going to come back fast enough. Um, uh, back to Hebrews 4.15. This high priest of ours, who is who? Jesus. He understands our weaknesses. For he, faces, he faced all of the same testings that we do. Yes, and he did not sin. Okay? So he sees our end he sees our pitfalls he sees our current circumstances so when we think about that and now we think about the flip side that god is all seeing so i am safe all right let's uh for those of you who uh who, who have kids and for those of you who haven't, if you think back to when you were a kid, if you uh, if, if the kids are out out playing outside, wherever outside is, at your place, at somebody else's place, in a playground, in a uh, in a gym, whatever the case is, and as a as a as a parent, you typically have at least one eye on what's going on, right? See that what what's going on is okay. And in our feeling, as long as we can see them, they are safe, right? So if we think about that God is the good father, that would have the same, the, the same uh, parallel there as well. That he can see what's going on, so he knows that, they're, that we're safe. Now go to the flip side. As a as a child, when we were out doing whatever, now there were times that, uh, you know, we didn't care if mom and dad could see us or not, right? In trees, out of trees, over the hills, through the dales, in the tunnels, in the culverts, in whatever we could find our way into, right? But quite often our parents knew what we were doing, either through themselves or the wonderful grapevine of every neighbor in the county, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so somehow news could get back to mom and dad. But before those times that we didn't mind wandering, who who remembers doing, you know, playing somewhere and then every once in a while look, looking around to see 
who's watching? Can they see me? As long as they can see me, I know I'm, I'm safe. I'm good. I'm not in trouble. I can, keep do, I can keep doing what I'm doing, right? Because as soon as they see me and I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing, all of a sudden, I'm not doing what I was <laughs> doing, right? So we felt as though we were safe when our parents could see us. So there again, that parallel should ring true, that we should be able to feel safe because we know that our Heavenly Father sees us. Okay? Um, there was one time, I was uh, probably about eight, and we were at my grandparents' 40th anniversary. And they had had all of, all of their brothers and sisters. I mean, it was a big get-together of, of our side. There's probably 100, 150 people at this. Um, everybody got together. We went to a, out to a, a, a restaurant um, that was booked out, a banquet hall, and uh, had a meal. Everybody was together, and the ki- uh, all of us kids were playing in and out. And I went to the bathroom, and when I came back out, it was as if nobody had been in this room. All of the tablecloths had been redone. All of the plates and, and silverware had been reset. Glasses were all back to where they, like, literally as though nobody had been there. And I got there, and what do you think my first thought was? Exactly. It's like, the rapture had to have happened because there is no way that this could possibly have happened this quick unless that's what happened. <laughs> And so I was afraid because nobody could see me, right? I was by myself. And as time went, the, uh, one of the, the uh, waiters or managers, whoever, saw me, and they asked, you know, who are you here with? They said, well, we, just, we were just in here having, uh, uh, having a meal with my grandparents. Well, what's your, gran- what, what's your grandpa's name? Well, what does an eight, what's, the, what's, what's grandpa's name when you're eight? Grandpa, yeah, exactly, and that's ex- you know, and so I'm just like, what's his name? It's like it's Grandpa, you know, call him. <laughs> so they found out who who it was, and and uh, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, that that was a point in my life that I truly had about as much fear as you could have because everybody I knew, as far as I knew, was gone. Didn't know where I was, how to get back to anybody. Um. So anyway, I was out of their sight, they were out of my sight, and I felt as though I was not safe, right? So, um, but what is safe? We're going to read Proverbs 5.21, for the Lord sees clearly what a man does, examining every path he takes. Psalms 18, 2 and 3. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. My God is my rock, in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me, and, the, and my place of safety. I called on the Lord, who is worthy of praise, and he saves me from my enemies. Proverbs 29, 25, fearing people is a dangerous trap, but trusting the Lord means safety, okay? Um, so what does it mean to be safe? There was another time when I was 15 years old. I was heading in, uh, into town to, to uh, work at my dad's grocery store. And the gravel road that we took into the north side of town had this big gravel turn uh, curve on it. And on the out, and mind you, this is this is Nebraska. You know, curves are not a normality in everywhere we are. You know, you'll have you'll have a road that is almost almost uh, string straight for 25 miles. Um, and so there's this one corn coming uh, corner coming into town. Yeah, the only curves are 90 degrees, and you have to slow down for those. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, and it was a. a Pretty cold November morning, and I was coming through, and there was a spot of loose gravel just as I started hitting this this curve. 
and my car started fishtailing. And I tell you what, I was, I, I was pretty afraid at that point because it wasn't just a curve. The outside of this curve had a 30-foot straight drop down, it, down in, into, a, into a gully. And so um, I, I fought to, to correct and recorrect and double correct. And just finally, I saw the nose go over the edge of the, of the, uh, the curve. And as soon as, it, as that happened, I heard a voice that said, let go. And so I just let go of the, the steering wheel, went straight over the edge. The car dipped down, went straight down the, the side of the cliff. Um, at the very base, there was a point that it, that it, it curved back out. And the, the car had enough to, to curve back out and then set suspended at the very end by the bumpers on the edges of, of the ravine. And so I opened the door. It's about six more feet down. The, news, the good news was that it was completely safe. But before I got out, I turned around because it was literally as though there was somebody in the back seat that said, let go. And... I, I didn't understand why uh, let go made any sense because in our minds, we're just like, hang on for dear life, right? But the tow truck driver that came over, he said, you know, if you had held on to that steering wheel, you would have jarred it into a direction and you would have gone into a, into a uh, 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 started flipping, a ro rolling down, down that hill, and it would not have been as good of, a, of a, an end. And so I had that in my mind moving forward to time. Probably about six years later, I was heading, uh, heading somewhere else in April, and we had an ice storm come through. And, <coughs> well, it was raining and got black ice on the road. And, again, straight road. All of a sudden, the car started, started uh, flipping out and just went into an immediate spin, just doing donuts down down the highway at 55 miles an hour and again i heard a voice that said sit back and enjoy the ride and i tell you what I had zero fear i had zero concern because i remembered that voice i remembered how it turned out at the end and at the end there was nothing wrong The good news is, is I haven't had to hear that voice again. But the better news is I wouldn't have had to because I know that God sees me and he sees all of us. So it is about five after seven and we're going to we're going to break in about 10 minutes, and we're going to go over the questions uh, that are on the back of, this, of, of the page. But I want to talk about uh, notes of what does it mean to be safe. Okay? So when you, when you think about being safe, what do you think of? Security. What's that? Locking the front door. Nothing can get at you, right? Okay. Comfortable. Watched. In a, in a good way. <laughs> no creepy watchers. Okay, you're relaxed, you're at peace. Okay, so, and I'm just, just kind of ha having you start to think about this, because this, this, is, this is where our, our discussions are going to turn um, at the end of this. All right? So, then below that, I have on here a strong Christian's view of security. All right? And so I kind of want, want you in, in your mind as we're, as we're talking through our discussions to think through what our, our natural thought of what, what does it mean to be safe is. And as I grow in my faith of who God is and who I am in him, what does it really mean to be safe? Okay? Okay. And to help us with that, there, there's a, a, don't look yet, don't look yet. Just kidding. 
<laughs> to help us with that, there's, there, there's a, a, a scripture on the next page that we'll, we'll read during, during our, our discussion as well. So, um, <laughs> you can look. All right. All right. This is, the, this is the story of Stephen when he, when he was stoned. Okay? So it's, you know, not that long after, after uh, Jesus was crucified. He was the first, um, the first martyr of the church. And so um, we'll, we'll look at that and we'll see what, what his thought of safety was. All right? All right, so let's go ahead and break up into, into just a couple of groups tonight. And we've got a few questions and some time of discussion. And let's come back um, at about 725.